Welcome back. Now we look at where markets ended the week with fighting raging in Israel. New September inflation data coming in higher than expected. And the big banks kicking off the third quarter earnings season. Double beats across the board there. But the banks are still sounding the alarm about a slowing economy, elevated inflation, and now geopolitical risks. JP Morgan warning that this may be the most dangerous time the world has seen in decades. Joining me right now is the Bear Traps Report founder, Larry McDonald. Larry, good to see you. Thank you for being here. I know you've been doing calls with lots of institutional clients. How does the war on Israel change things for you with regard to investment? Well, the one thing that opened my eye in listening to some of the calls with the institutional clients and the, you know, the major consultants in the world in geopolitical you know, risk is that uh, it, it turns out there was some intelligence warning to the Netanyahu government and the, the Soviet, and so the, the, there's a misstep there. So the probability of an overreaction now uh, is high. In other words, you know, because you made a strategic mistake in terms of intelligence uh, responding to that, and then maybe now there's an overreaction. So I think that's why the market is that you know, having a little bit more vol because the, the next leg of this is about to come forth. Yeah, we are waiting uh, on a uh, ground war to take place, as we just spoke with uh, Senator Ted Cruz, who also expects that. But, Larry, I want to get your take on what's driving markets specifically, because interest rates have been an issue. They've backed up. Uh, but now lots of participants in the market are saying maybe the market did the work for the Fed. And they are now expecting a pause at the next meeting. Your thoughts on interest rates as well as the price of oil, which has also been a challenge for stock investors? Well, the amazing thing for our viewers right now, we are on the doorstep of a multipolar world portfolio. In other words, the last 15, 20 years, we've had a unipolar world where the U.S. is the strongest military force in the world, well-funded, and we have more allies, right? Now, military funding is in, is in jeopardy for next year. Raytheon's down 35% almost. And, uh, and, the milit and not just that, most of the defense stocks are, are having a tough time because interest on the debt over the next 12 to 18 months is going to be $1.2 trillion. That potentially could crowd out military spending. And then when you're so generous with uh, the Ukraine on funding, the pressure on the U.S. to fund this uh, next war is going to be very high, right? Because you've got to treat uh, Israel and the Ukraine as equal parties, or at, at least that much. So that's the funding cost. So the bottom line is people watching us right now, they're probably in a, in a unipolar world portfolio, which is like growth stocks and, and bonds. And really a multipolar world is higher inflation, higher bond yields, you know, hard assets, real, you know, real assets that are going to protect you from a higher inflation regime. Well, you talked about hard assets the last time that we spoke. Uh, what are you insinuating? Do you want to be buying gold? Do you want to be buying oil? And what about the start to this, the third quarter reporting season? The banks traded higher on Friday, but of course, they've had a really tough time recently. Would you buy the banks here? I think it's getting close to buy the banks. Uh, there's a lot of short covering um, going on because remember, that, like you said, you, you know, the banks are off 45% in the case of City into the news, right? So there's, there's shorts that are covering. Bank of America is off 44% into their earnings coming up. So uh, there's a lot of shorts. I think you might have one leg down. I think you can buy some of these Texas, you know, some of the regions, regional banks, and we're looking at Texas Capital Bank, uh, companies that have less exposure to, say, California real estate. Uh, but, but hard assets like platinum, palladium, Al Alco is 73% off the highs. You're talking about the largest wow. aluminum maker in the world, and you're talking about you know, a, a power grid in the United States that's in some, some stages 30, 40, 50 years old. So the demand for the green generation of the next 10 years for aluminum strong, and so hard asset plays. I think like BHP Bulletin, you could see a BHP, a Rio Tinto in the top 10 part of the S&P composition in the next five years. Right now, the S&P literally has very little industrials, very little uh, materials, very little oil. It's only 14%, those section of the S&P, 14%, whereas in 1980, that those three groups were 50%, 50% of the S&P. We will leave it there. Larry, good to talk with you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Bria.